was sort of in a place where I, I just really felt like I wanted to do something for myself. Um, and that involved obviously good food um, and working around my kids and my lifestyle. So basically I was just looking for something that sort of ticked all those boxes. Um, and I had been a serial stalker of primal alternative um, and I just kept going back to it. So just realised that I could work from home, um, you know, could work around the kids' schedules, um, bake at night if needed, um, and obviously the food aspect as well, just being able to provide good, wholesome food for people. So that was my, that's what I wanted to do, really, yeah. My health journey, oh, oh, yeah, my health journey started about 12 years ago, um, or even before that, 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with um, Hashimoto's and, you know, the usual weight gain that comes with it and fatigue and all that sort of a thing. Then I saw a naturopath who put me on what she, she didn't call it paleo. She didn't call it grain free. She just said for eight weeks, eliminate, you know, the grains. And or, so it was basically primal way of eating. And I felt much better and my blood works. And the main difference I saw was um, I never realized that I was reacting to gluten. And when I started introducing them back, I, my joint pain was back. That was the one. And my blood work showed that my an antibodies for thyroid were way down. So where it was eight weeks before that, it was over 1,000. So they can't count beyond 1,000 it had come down to 350. So that was just with the eight week eliminating grains and dairy, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I've always wanted uh, to be in the food business. I don't know why. Um, I'm a special educator and um, I've always, my career has been in teaching, especially uh, special education, but um, at the back of my mind, I always wanted to do something with food. Not necessarily at that time, I did not be primal or grain free. Um, in 2005, by then, by 2015, I was fully grain free. Um, when I say fully, 80%, you know, occasional rice and things like that. But it just, I felt better. My health, you know, was the best ever it had been. Um, in 2015, there was some restructuring happening at, uh, at work and I just thought, okay, this is the time I need to look at, um, this is an opportunity to change my career, which I've always wanted to do. So I did look into, at that time, I don't know if everyone had heard, it was called Paleo Cafe. It was the Paleo Cafe. I think the franchise started in Brisbane. I don't think they exist anymore. Anyway, I looked into it, I seriously looked into it. I went and looked at a cafe um, and I was nearly in there, but then my kids were much younger at that time. They were still at home and at school. Um, and I think just the, and I had no background in business. So I was literally going in blind just because I wanted to do it and I wanted a change in career. So, but, and at the same time, I did find another job and which I liked. So I went in there and I put that on the back burner till 2018. I saw your beautiful face on Instagram. And I just, I think by then it was three more years. So the kids were a little older. Most of them were at uni and, you know, I said, yes. And I was working full time. And then I was in a... Um, not teaching on the ground level, but I was in the office jobs. I was an advisor for special education. So it was a pretty higher leadership role. So it wasn't like, it wasn't for financial reasons. I just wanted to, you know, do something. Um, and in those three, so 2012 was when I had done that eight week grain free. Uh, and then of course, I just started reading. Uh, I had done 21 day sugar detox coaching program, you know, so I was a lot of reading and following people and things like that. So I think that's why you must have popped up in my Insta because that, that was my tribe basically. Um, and 
but 2018, I had no intention of changing or you know doing anything different. Um, Oh, no. so, so going back to when, when I was doing that eight weeks, I found it really hard to do everything from scratch. But it wasn't because it was because it was for me and it was just for me. Uh, and of course, the kids were young, so they didn't. I just had to make separate things for them. So which was hard, you know, to making two meals. Um, and I, I used to now and again reflect that. I, when I saw yours, or I, by then um, things had come coming up. And once before that, I had actually done a low carb sort of Atkins diet. It was it wasn't, um, but I used to buy all these low carb bars, and you know, um, which were filled. At that time, I didn't know any better, so I thought I was doing really well because I used to go to these. Um, vitamin shops and you know buy the low carb uh, filled with junk so that was always at the back of my mind and when this opportunity came up I said yes this is what I want to do and the best part about it was because, like I said when I wanted to join um, by the paleo cafe franchise it was a lot of investment mm. we're talking big big dollars plus I had not like everything else, once you open the cafe, you were on your own, basically, you know. Um, and when I found you, I said, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I straight away, I spoke to my husband later, but I booked a call with you. Um, I did mention that this is what I'm doing. I booked a call and, but I was at a stage of life that I could make the decision. I didn't have to, you know. And especially for such a small investment, like there was, it was a no brainer for me. Um, I said, I don't have to do anything. Like literally, I think I've used this word a lot. It was like a business out of a box. You just open the box, you're ready to go. Everything, um, even, I mean, at that time we had, I think 13 products or something, uh, very few. We didn't have many products when I started. It has grown, but, Again, I haven't had to do anything, you know, like the business, you're doing everything, like the everything is taken care of and I don't regret it at all. And the my why, you know, then just putting all these pieces, to, that's why I gave you the background is just thinking of only I wish, yes, low carb is good. I wish there were better low carb products at that time. You know, I may not have reached that stage where, um, uh, you know, my thyroid would have, like this was three years before that, when I was actually diagnosed with the hypothyroidism. So yeah, it just, um, and now I feel I'm still in that, like in between I have gone part-time, but I've got even a bigger role. So I'm really, uh, you know, it's a busy full-time. So when I started, I was full-time, then I went part-time with a view of slowly um, reducing my days on the on my main uh, primary job and making primary alternative my full-time. But because I work in, you know, in a field of helping others, and that's the common theme, I feel like finally I've realized that, no, I don't want to give up this because I am making a difference to the students with disabilities lives. At the same time, I, it, it's, this is, I enjoy baking, I enjoy um, following this, you know, um, primal way of living. And I wish at that time when I was doing it, there was products like Primal Alternative, which would have helped my, made my journey so much easier. So that's my why. Starting a business is scary, but having the, the backup of you and the community as well, um, it's so lovely. And because I have had a previous business, oops, and, you know, you don't have anyone to talk to when you're by yourself and you don't have anything to bounce off other people um, and realising that, oh, I actually do have a sisterhood there to chat to is like awesome. You know, you're not by yourself, um, which is really, really lovely. Um, and really realising that I can actually do it with young kids as well um, is like a really cool moment. Like this can happen. I've got young kids, can work around their schedule, um, and I can get it all done and love it too while I'm doing it. So a couple of the places um, 
Canara Organic Marketplace. So they're connected to Flannery's, um, which is, I think it's Queensland and New South Wales at Flannery's. I'm not sure if you've got them WA, but anyway. Um, so they're a couple of major ones. And I contacted Canara pretty much straight away when I became a Prime Minister because it was someone that I knew I wanted to get on board. And it took a while. There were lots of hoops to jump through. Um, and I just sort of, I kept hounding them. <laughs> if they didn't get back to me, I just sent another email or I called and it just felt like, you know, Josh, the manager, he was busy and he's got, you know, so many other stockists and emails go missing. So I just sort of kept on their, kept on their email list and then finally got in the door. They said yes. And it's, um, it's been a really great hit. So really, really good. And then Flannery's is the sister store of Canara and then they saw how good it was selling. So they wanted to get on board as well. And yeah, it's been really wonderful. They're mainly stockists. So most of my um, income comes from the wholesale side. Um, so I've got roughly around five or six stockists. Um, Canara is the big one. So they're ordering weekly to fortnightly orders um, and they can order up to 100 products. Um, so that was happening weekly. Um, it's sort of quietened down a little bit. So it's sort of pushed back to the week and a half now. Um, and then another small, some smaller stockists as well that ordering weekly that can be up to 20 products a week. Um, one orders every three weeks and that's probably like 30 products. So between all of them, it's, it keeps me busy weekly. Um, and then I do a market as well. So that's where I get um, the retail side of it. So I do that every third every third Saturday of the month, um, which is nice as well. So that's um, just a small market, but roughly I've done, I think, four now and around 600 to 700 for the day um, dollars. So pretty good. So in regards to how much I bake and um, sort of how much money I would take in. So like I said, I bake for my stockists um, once a week and I bake for the markets once a week. So in terms of my stockists, I have about uh, like 12 or 15. Some of them only order every three months or two or three months um, and they freeze the stock, which is great. And they just do a big order every, every now and then. I've got a few more stockists who order uh, weekly or fortnightly um, and that's good too. Just, you know, it's a regular, regular sort of thing. Um, and I kind of know that that money is going to be coming in um, weekly or fortnightly. Uh, so in terms of how much I bake for my stockists, I usually, I'd say about average would be a thousand dollars a week um, in terms of turnover. Uh, it can be up to sort of fifteen hundred dollars, um, and then sometimes down to maybe eight hundred or so. But I'd say average around one thousand to maybe twelve hundred dollars, and that's for stockists. Um, so that's um, at wholesale price. Uh, and then for my markets, usually um, sort of the minimum I would do at a market is about $600. Um, usually it's more like around $750 to $850. Around Christmas time, I would make around, um, uh, yeah, usually at least $1,000 you know, in the markets leading up to Christmas and up to Easter as well. They both tend to be a fair bit more lucrative. I've just, I've always started small and I didn't really go big not because I uh, I couldn't, it was because I wanted to keep that balance of, you know, my full-time job and this. Um, so it's basically right now, uh, it grew, like you said, depending on, I would, so my, I started with only stockists initially, and even now it's mainly stockists and I've just got two stockists actually. Um, and it's, with two stockers and a few direct customers, my turnover last year was 20,000. That was the sales, 20,000, like it is. And I would say on an average, I would be making a, a day and a half, if that, you know, which was, it's, it's just, it's regular. Like I've, a lot of customers are repeat customers. They, you know, direct customers which is the margin of profit is more. Um, I've got two stockers 
even the like I had at one time I had five stockers, which they slowly um, reduced, especially during the COVID. A lot of them closed down. Um, my main the stockers who I started with, she has slowed down because her cafe and uh, she's they're only operating two or three days a week, and you know it is, but. I think I'm, I'm just doing my <laughs> tax returns for last year now. And, and it is it is still, um, it, I think it's about 15,000 sales. That is baking one day a week, literally. Um, and it, it was very easy. When I wanted, I would increase it. Or if, if I didn't want, I would pull back, you know. And like I said, if I wanted, um, I could have got, I can get many more. So if you're, if anyone is out there in Sydney, we really need people <laughs> uh, because there is demand for stockists, um, for producers and customers. There is no, um, no shortage of people inquiring about producers. But even now, like just in the last week, I had two phone calls from, they found me on the website, um, from an old, and I don't even have my own website or, um, I don't promote it actively, but they looked up on the main website and two of them contacted me and they placed orders here. Of course, it hasn't happened for the last two and a half years, but the highlights was just mating all these amazing people in the health community, you know, um, all the naturopaths and the wellness summits and even just us getting together, Joe Witten and Fuad and you know like it is it's been amazing it's just and the very first year I think I met you you came here for the wellness summit in Kayama so roughly I'd say probably around 100 products a week I am baking um, and I've sort of finally worked into a, a good routine now where before I was sort of getting an order and making sure it was fulfilled straight away um, but it was just sort of a bit making our family life, oh, I've got to, I've got to bake, but now I've put like boundaries in place, I guess you say to my stockers, please order by this day um, and I will deliver it on this day. So my bake days are Monday, Tuesday. I deliver on a Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday, I've got a little one at home and then Saturday, Sunday, my partner's home. So any other small deliveries that I get um, through retail customers, um, through my website, I can deliver on the weekends and sort of admins um, stuff on the weekend too. So all your stickers and making sure all of that's up to date as well. So, yeah. Um, it is, you know, it, it, it's a job. Um, it's something that you have to juggle around your, your other, you know, life commitments. I um, do study as well. So I um, have, I've, I'm studying just part-time um, and I manage plan alternative around that. You know, fairly easily. Um, I do find that Primal Alternative is very flexible because I can, um, you know, I can take a week off the markets if I want to. Um, I can even take a week off from my stockers if I want to, um, I, you know, as long as I communicate with them and, you know, at least a week or two in advance to give them a chance to order anything ahead. Um, I don't actually find that if I take time off from my stockers, it affects um, my income that much, um, as long as it's not you know, too frequent because um, they tend to, people, my stockers will tend to stock up sort of the week before I'm having a week off or order more the week after. Um, so in terms of managing time, I bake, um, uh, depending on how many orders I have, but I usually bake three to four days a week. Um, I'd say three and a half. Um, in terms of my stockists, I bake for them on Sunday and Monday. So Monday is my proper bake day, but Sunday I'll if I do have quite a few stockers and I do usually have quite a few orders, I'll usually be doing prep and maybe some baking as well on Sunday. So that can be sort of a day. Um, if I've got a lot of orders, it's a full day on Sunday and a full day on Monday. If it's just, a, um, if it's just, it's not, if it's not as many, then it's, um, then I just bake on Monday and just do prep, so, you know, a few hours prep on Sunday. Um, then I do markets as well. So I do, I have a farmer's market on a Saturday. I bake on Thursday and Friday for that. So Thursday again, it's usually, um, prep and I'll make things like cookies and packet mixes and granolas ahead of time. Um, like I said, I do this sort of during school hours. Then um, after my son's home, I usually will um, have to still spend some time uh, packaging. Um, you know, you have to wait for the breads to cool. Um, then I don't know if this is just me, but I really um, appreciate the fact that I'm 
at home and I am able to um, sort of combine my housework and my baking sort of into one. Um, I always think that, you know, if I, could, if I was going out to work, if I was going, you know, to a job somewhere, I would have to come home to a messy house. Um, whereas here, yeah, I'm, you know, I bake, then I quickly vacuum in, you know, tidy up the sink and clean the dishes. And then I finished and, you know, the house is clean. <laughs> And that's great. Um, the other thing is, you know, you can if you're if you're managing a household, you can also just you know put a load of washing on here and there. Um, you know, have lunch when you want to. Um, hang the washing out, bring it in. You know, you can combine all those activities. Um, yeah, you also get to you know it's also really good that you can start work you know at sort of at a time that suits you. Um, some people prefer to bake in the evening. I personally prefer to bake sort of morning time and have it done by um, you know by school by the time school's finished. Um, you know, I can get up. I don't ever have to set my alarm pretty much. Occasionally I, I will if I want to get, you know, get a head start. Um, oh, other than the markets, of course, I do have to set my alarm for that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's it really. Like I, I guess my day would be, I get, I wake up probably around six as a, you know, as an average. I usually will do some exercise in the morning. Um, I might get started with some prep or some baking or just get my son ready for school depending on what time it is. Then I'll be baking, um, tidying up, doing any housework that needs doing, um, go pick my son up from school, finish finish off any um, any you know, packaging that I have to do, then get dinner started and you know then it's evening time and it's family time. Um, uh, so that's a bake day. Um, yeah look it's a job you do have to juggle. Um, there'll be lots of you know, whatever other tasks you have to do. I don't have an accounting system at the moment. It's just me and my book work <laughs> and my computer Excel files. Um, I am looking into getting something because it, it would be a lot easier to even invoicing just so it sends it out and it reminds the stockist as well. Um, but that's just me at the moment. So I sort of, I prefer it that way to begin with, doing it myself and just, you know, the old school way, I guess you call it. Yeah, so I've got a, a square reader um, and I've only just realised that, um, you know, it records and it gives all all the data and all of that. So I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit useless when it comes to that sort of thing. But um, yeah, no, the square reader um, is great. It is all the low carb on the Sunshine Coast. So like the fat and seedy bread, fat and seedy pizza bases, um, the no nut hemp bread, they're my go-tos like for customers coming to me personally and also stockists they get the most low carb options yeah so it must just be a thing on the sunshine coast <laughs> in terms of products that i bake i bake everything um i have my favorites that i you know sort of push more to stockists but um again like that's going to be really individual like you're going to figure out what what you're good at making and what you like making and you probably want to um push those a bit more um uh because you probably you know if you as long as if especially if you can be quite um, efficient with your time um, in terms of what you're making, you'll find some things you can make really, really quickly. And then obviously your hourly rate's gonna be higher for those products. Um, I guess I have more confidence in myself. Um, I remember, you know, the first few days, well, first few weeks of looking around, looking for stockists and then actually having to go in and speak to them, very nerve wracking for me. That wasn't, you know, my strength. Um, but realizing that I can actually do it. So that confidence boost um, as well. And yeah, just feeling like this, the, yeah, the fulfillment of having all these amazing products, even just being able to speak to people at the markets um, because most of my um, orders are stockists. So being able to have that conversation with real people at the markets and realizing that wow, these products are actually helping um, and it's, you know, they love it. And yeah, just being able to provide that for people is so nice. So yeah, just that sense of fulfillment, I think. Yeah. I'm terrible at, um, you know, all the legality stuff, all the, the labeling like that, just, I don't want to deal with it. Um, and my products like here that I went to the markets and I loved them. Um, but I wanted something that was already already done, already established, already, you know, something that people knew about already as well. So getting into shops with a product that 
no one knew about because it was just my little thing was pretty daunting and then I have to go through all the proper labeling you know all the testing and that just like no (laughs) too hard basket for me so yeah something that was already already done for you really really looked appealing to me yeah I don't even know how long I was stalking for it was quite a while because I remember I had quite a few conversations with my partner being like can you just have a look at this like what do you think of this and sort of seeking that approval I guess um but yeah it was quite a while and I just kept going back to the website reading through everything I think I booked a couple of calls with you and then um was like I don't know and then yeah realized that actually gonna do it but um Sorry, what was the second question? It was um, the money side for us. I was a little bit concerned, um, but once I you know, said yes to you, I just knew I was going to make it happen because it, it was something that I wanted to do. Um, and I did make it happen. You know, I have been through that first year and I have paid it off and our family has gone on as per usual. Um, so I just realised that, you know, if you want something bad enough, you will make it happen. So I think just that old school way of thinking of like, oh, you know, maybe later, maybe when we've got more money, you know, maybe then it will work. But really, it did work and I should have done it earlier. <laughs> just make take the first step. If you have any doubts, we have the answers for you. You know, this. I think each and every one of us, we all come with those doubts. I mean, like I said, I was at, I'm at a different stage of life, so I didn't. Yes, I had questions. That's why I booked a call with you and you have all the answers. So if you are sitting on the fence for the, um, for the small investment, the, you will rate like not just financial, there's so many benefits in this. And can I just tell everyone how good our whole, we call it the sisterhood and how we all support each other. We all have each other's back and, you know, everyone's there to jump, help each other. So if you, if you want like a holistic career or holistic way of earning, um, earning some money while being at home, especially if you have young children, it is the best thing, but take the first step. We have the answers for you. And we all have the same, you know, um, I guess, doubts and questions and uh, yeah, and and you can make it work. You know, if you are sort of sitting on the fence, I think just jump in and do it. You know, if you, if you do keep going back, keep reading all the stuff um, and in your heart, you just know that you want to do it. I say, just do it. Um, It's like I've said, it's, you know, the products are helping people and it's so nice just to know that, that, you're making someone else's life easier, um, nourishing people and, you know, all of that sort of thing. So um, I say just go and do it. <laughs> awesome. Get on board. All right. So best selling point. I guess, um, well, first of all, there's all the um, sales scripts and everything like that in our resources for you to follow um, to go into a stockist. But Um, firstly I just call and say I'm Ash I've got a small business on the Sunshine Coast um, prime alternative it's all grain free and yeah just organize to go in and meet the manager um, or someone in charge and then just yeah just go in and um, have your stockist brochures and it basically sells itself really Um, that's pretty much yeah you just Well, obviously all the basics, grain-free, you know, go through each product. But, um, yeah, I guess you just say grain-free and it sort of is like, oh, okay, tell us more. (laughs) The other thing I would really, um, I think Jackie asked, what's the one selling point is we have a whole, we cater to a whole range of dietary requirements, like your vegan, keto, low carb. um, Some of them are low FODMAP. And grain free is the big one, and um, yeah, that's that's my thing. And Helen, your resources are you know we we got the scripts and the hows and whys of selling, so that is that's a great resource too. Yeah, yeah. I guess. All right. So be organized with your with your day. Um, so if you've got orders coming in, like prioritize what you're going to cook. 
Um, but I guess um, before that, you obviously have to get the orders. So my top tip for there would just be follow up with your stockists or potential stockists. Um, just sort of get in their face as well. Send, send the email, send the phone calls, or sorry, phone call, you know, them and just don't feel like you're being too pushy um, because they're busy and they've got, you know, a hundred other stockers that they're dealing with and ordering. And yeah, so that would be a top tip of just get in their face and follow up and don't feel like, oh, they didn't call me. Um, they mustn't want it. They mustn't want the product. So yeah, just follow up. Um, other top tips. Um, I guess just believe in yourself as well. Like it can be done. Um, setting, setting up your day, um, realizing what you have to do and just sort of getting it done. At the start, I was sort of, you know, doing all the little bits and, oh, I just have to reorganize, reorganize my pantry and make sure that that's all tidy. And um, yeah, just sort of get in there, get baking and get it done as well. And then, yeah. Believe in yourself. That's the main thing. Believe in yourself and believe in the product. Like be, you know, show your confidence in the product, know your products well, uh, not, you know, not the details of, how many carbs and things but really know your products the range of products you're offering um, and the health benefits you know have a story have your why I think coming giving your personal um, context to it and your belief like you have to really believe in it that's my thing uh, and be confident about it um, and the other things like you know be organized don't wait for perfect the perfect day and don't wait, wait for the perfect day to jump into like if you want if you're if you even have like you know oh maybe this will interest me obviously you are here so you this you are interested in this just make that you know book a call with the prime ministers or helen and um, find out more and you can do it Thank you.